In this lesson, we're going to talk about graphing and writing equations of ellipses that have their center at the origin. Well, there are a lot of things to know about ellipses. So let's talk about all of the different points or important points in a vertex. I'm sorry, in an ellipse. First, we have the vertices, which are on the elongated portion of the ellipse. Then we have the foci, which are inside of the ellipse, also on the elongated portion of the ellipse and that run along the major axis. Now the major axis divides the ellipse into two separate halves, equal halves, and runs along again the elongated portion of the ellipse. I also have covertices, which are on the minor, what's called the minor axis, or the axis that runs through the middle of the narrower portion of the vertex. And then I have the center. The center is just halfway in between the two vertices, and also the two covertices. So let's talk more specifically about the points. Now the ellipse is the set of all points such that the sum of the distances from the foci, it's a plural, plural focus, and any point on the ellipse is constant. So what does that mean? That means that if I were to draw a line from one point, uh, the focus, and then the other focus to a point on the ellipse, that the sum of these two distances would be the same as if I were to draw a line here. So regardless of what my point is on the ellipse, the foci serve to identify that relationship which says that the sum, again, of the distances between the two foci will be constant. So that's the importance of the foci. Second thing we want to talk about are, are, is the major axis. And the major axis is this red line. It runs through the elongated portion of uh, the ellipse. So different from a circle where you have some center and you have every point that's equidistant from the center. In this case, you have really two kind of centers and the sum of their distances is going to be the same throughout the ellipse. So we end up having a, an elongated portion of the ellipse based on uh, the equation for ellipse and the way that it's handled. And so the major axis runs through the vertex and the two foci. So also note that the vertices are on the major axis. The minor axis is a segment that crosses the line that crosses the narrower portion of the ellipse and runs through the covertices. So now the minor axis does not run through the foci. It runs through the covertices and also the center. And again, it runs through the narrower portion of the ellipse. And finally, we have the center. And the center uh, is on in the intersection of the major and minor axes. And it's also the halfway point between the vertices, the covertices, and also the foci. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to write an equation for an ellipse and what it would look like. We have two different equations, so to speak. They both look very similar, but they identify two different ellipses, one where the major axis is horizontal and the other where the major axis is going to be vertical. So let's talk about the horizontal axis first. In both cases, we have uh, two variables which are squared. Those variables we call x and y squared are two variables x and y. Both of those are squared. Now what changes the ellipse is whether or not the a value, which is the actually just the distance, it identifies the distance of the vertex from the center, whether the a value is underneath the x or the y value. In the case where we have an equation of an ellipse with a horizontal axis, the a value happens to be underneath the x squared value. Now the a value is always going to be greater than the b value. Let's say the absolute value of the a value is going to be greater than the absolute value of the b value. The b value identifies just the distance from the center of the ellipse to the covertices. So the b value is going to be less than the a value. So in this case, we have 
the A value corresponding to the X axis. So the A value is underneath the X uh, variable and the B value is underneath the Y variable. We have an equation for an ellipse with a horizontal axis. Now if we were to rotate the ellipse in such a way now that the elongated portion runs from top to bottom, we would change the equation so now the a squared value lies underneath the y squared value and the b squared value lies underneath the x squared value. So either way, we're adding two squared variables y and x over some squared value that represents the distances from the center to the vertices, the co-vertices. And those end up equaling one. So let's take one example and then we'll be done. So here's my example. I have an ellipse and we can see that the orientation is such that the horizontal or major axis is going to be horizontal. So I know my A value is going to be underneath my X squared variable and my B value is going to be underneath my Y squared variable. My A value is going to be five. It's just the distance from the center to the vertices. And my B value is going to be three, just again, the distance from the center to the co-vertices. So I can rewrite my equation then, knowing that this again has a uh, major axis that, that is horizontal as x squared over a squared, which is five squared, x squared over 25, is equal to y, excuse me, plus y squared over b squared, which is nine, is equal to one. 